All right, this video we're going to look at uh, finding where a function's concave up, concave down, and I know I don't have it in the directions, but we're going to find the inflection points. Uh, remember the inflection points, that's where the graph changes concavity. So first, let's look at uh, the test for concavity. So f is a function whose second derivative exists on an open interval i. If f double prime is greater than zero for all x in the interval i, then the graph of f is concave upward in that interval. And if f double prime is less than zero for all x in the interval i, then the graph of f is concave downward in that interval. All right, so basically what we need to do is just find the second derivative, set it equal to zero, and uh, solve for x. And then we'll uh, check to see where it's concave up, concave down. All right, so first thing we need to do, we need to find where the, we need to find the second derivative. So let's go ahead and find the first derivative. So here we have to uh, we have to uh, find the first derivative. So remember this is the quotient rule. So the derivative of the numerator, which is zero, times the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator, times the numerator, and that's all over the denominator squared and so we're left with f prime of x is negative 12x over x squared plus 3 squared. Alright now to find the second derivative. Alright once again we'll use the quotient rule so f double prime of x is the derivative of the numerator, negative 12, times the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator. So to take the derivative of the denominator, we have to use the chain rule. So that's 2 times x squared plus 3. Subtract 1 from the exponent, leaves us with 1, times the derivative of what's inside the exponent. So times 2x times so this is the this is the derivative of the denominator and then times the numerator negative 12x and that's all over the denominator squared all right so now we need to clean this up a little bit so we've got f double prime of x is negative 12 times x squared plus 3 squared and then let's see we have what is that plus 48x squared times x squared plus 3 and that's all over x squared plus 3 to the fourth alright so to save a little time I'm not going to go in uh, do all the work to simplify this. Uh, basically what you would do, you see the x squared plus 3, that cancels. One of these cancels, you'll be left with a 1 in the exponent, and here you would be left with a cube. And then you just have to clear these parentheses, combine like terms, and so we would end up with f double prime is equal to 36 x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 3 cubed. All right, so that's our second derivative. So we set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Well, remember a fraction is 0 when the numerator is 0. So all we need to do is set the numerator equal to 0 and solve for x. So all I need to do is set the x squared minus 1 equal to 0. The 36 isn't going to affect the solution any. So x squared minus 1 equals 0. x is 1. 
and so that, I'm sorry, x squared is 1, so x is plus or minus the square root of 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. Alright, so here's the values that we'll plot on the on the number line. So let's plot these on there. And first, I think what we're going to do is let's erase all of this and bring everything up. Alright, so that's F, double prime of X is 36, X squared minus 1, over, uh, let's see, what was it, X squared plus 3 squared, and we ended up with X as plus or minus 1. Alright, so now let's go ahead and draw our number line. And let's plot our zeros on there. All right. So what I have to do now is I have to pick a number from each region and plug it into the second derivative. So I'm going to choose x equal negative 2, x equal 0, and x equal positive 2. All right, so let's, let's evaluate these. So f double prime of negative 2. So I plug the negative 2 into here. Okay. Now, when I'm doing this, I don't care what the exact value is when I plug the negative 2 in. All I want to know is it positive or negative. So we can see that the denominator, no matter what number we plug into the denominator, it's going to always be positive. Because for one thing, this in here will always be positive and then we're squaring it. Okay, so the denominator is always positive. So let's plug the negative 2 into the numerator. So negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1, that's positive, times a positive 36. So I have a positive over a positive. So this is greater than 0. So that means here, since this was positive, it's concave upward. Now, let's plug in the zero. So when I plug zero in, see how I get a negative times a positive is negative. So a negative over a positive is negative. So this is less than zero. And since this was negative, that means it's concave down. And then I've got F double prime of two. When I plug it in, I get a positive value. So that means on this interval, it's concave upward. All right, so we have concave upward from negative infinity to negative 1 on this interval. And it's concave upward from 1 to infinity. And then it's concave downward in this interval, see concave down from negative 1 to 1. Alright, All right. now let's go ahead and find our inflection points. So to find the inflection points, the inflection points, well it changes concavity here at negative 1. So I have an inflection point at negative 1, and now I need my y value. Well, to find the y value, I take the x value and plug it back into the original. So that's going to be f of negative 1 is 6 over negative 1 squared plus 3. So that's going to be 6 over 4, which is 3 halves. And then I also have an inflection point at 1, x equal 1. See, it changes concavity. 
so that's at 1 and then once again to find my y coordinate I take this x value plug it back into the original and so I have uh, f of 1 is 6 over 1 squared plus 3 which that is also 3 halves and so there's my inflection points and here's where it's concave up concave down all right so hopefully this video helped uh, don't forget to like and subscribe all right thanks